Hello, everyone. Good morning to you. Good morning. I bid us welcome to today's event, which is the second edition of webinar series hosted by Rasmet Publications Limited. This edition will be centered around the topic repositioning for post COVID-19 educational system via strategic planning and business growth. Now, we are looking at repositioning for post COVID-19 in our educational system and what we need to do to get ready now. I was talking about a quotation that is very apt for now. If your current business is having the same model that you had exactly this time last year, your business is already in trouble. Irrespective of the kind of model that you have, irrespective of the success that you have, irrespective of the agenda that you have, if your current business model is the same like you had it exactly this time last year, your business is in trouble. It just goes to show that things have changed within the last few months that what worked yesterday will certainly not work today. So we need to look at our business model again, call it a business plan, call it a business agenda or whatever you want to call it, the way you run your business, whatever it is, if it is still the way it was last year, then your business is in trouble. So what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? Well, now when we talk about repositioning, another word for reposition in simple English is to shift. When you reposition, you shift from where you used to be to a different direction. And I have this quote to go along with that. The success of your business is not in the things you do. It is in how you do those things. Most of us, we never paid attention to how our business is being run, particularly the school business. We run it as if it runs on autopilot, and that is not good enough. If you're going to survive post-COVID-19, then you have to pay attention to how you do your things. Again, I take the quote, the success of your business is not in the things you do, it is in the how you do those things. It is in how you do those things. And so when we are talking about shifting, we are looking at five major areas of your business. And that's our strategic approach to this agenda. You have to look at five key areas of how your business is running. Number one, your business must look genuinely at your performance management. You must look at how the people in your organization contribute to your operation. Everybody in your work team is doing something for your team. And if they are not helping your team, they are hurting your team. A lot of us allow people to just walk in the, in the crowd, they walk in the team, and some performances are hidden. And it's okay as long as we are getting minimal results. Post-COVID-19, that will not work. Because your business must begin to isolate its operator and begin to look at each of them with close monitoring agenda. So performance management is one area you will have to focus on, the performance of everybody within your team. The second area you will look at is your brand. We will talk in detail of what branding means and how you need to pay special attention. What are the key questions that you'll be asking yourself concerning the brand that you have existing in your business? And again, we look at our pricing. From the question, question, some of the questions we had in the last presentation, in the last webinar, people talked about, will people be able to pay again pricing that we had post COVID-19? These are areas we have to look at. And for each of these areas that we're looking at, we'll be asking ourselves three pertinent questions. And then again, you look at your finance. What does it mean? How can we look at it strategically? Then lastly, we'll be looking at our technology. Of course, we know what technology is, and we'll be looking at what are the key questions we'll be asking ourselves. Again, let me refresh us. Somebody said, then you are going to get the right answers. 
So we are going to be looking at questions that can steer us into thinking concerning how our school business will be running thereafter. So when we look at performance management, you must evaluate the contribution of every member of your team and ask yourself, this project, is this person really adding value to what we do in this place? Or is the person just in our team on sentimental ground? If we don't have a clear job description for this person, there are no clear deliverables. There are no expectations. Everybody that comes just come in and they mark their time and they go after the close of business and they come next day and run the same, the same circle, then it is not going to work post COVID-19. You have to look exactly at how everybody is adding value to your business. In fact, it will be very appropriate for us to have job description and job expectation for everybody in your team. Whether they are gate men, they are cleaner in the classrooms, they are class teachers, they are what attender, whatever it is that they do within your school system. Everybody must have a clear deliverable and you must monitor what they do. If you can't do it on a daily basis, at, at best you should be able to do it on a weekly basis. What have you done? What value have you added to our our association, our togetherness. Then question number two, is the quality of work of this person consistently excellent? Is this person improving on daily basis? A lot of people, they work and they, because nobody is actually me me measuring their contribution, they begin to glide down. They begin to slow down on their productivity. Everybody in your team, there must be a design by which they know they have to up their game and they are actually hopping their game. Is the quality of the work of this person consistently excellent? Or is this person consistently giving us headache? Is, is, do we have performance management, management issue with this individual? You have to look at the people and you have to be able to ask yourself and answer. If the question is not answered affirmatively, if the person is not consent, consistently excellent, then we have a problem. And just imagine that you had 10 people working in your department and about five of them are not adding value consistently. Then you can be sure that the outcome post COVID-19 will be disastrous. Question number three on performance management is, is this person making effort at personal growth? If anybody in your team is not making effort at personal growth, they are not working on themselves, they are not getting better at themselves, then they are going to draw the entire team down. They are going to pull everybody down. They are going to zero down everybody's contribution. Like I said a little earlier, if anybody is in your team and they are not adding value, they are taking away value from you. And what it means that people are adding value is that they make effort at their own personal life. They are making advancement in their own personal growth. Let's shift away from, from performance management. What else should we be looking at? Our point number two, brand and branding. Your brand is the image you project in the mind of the market. Your brand is the way people out there, they see your project, they see your business. Now, for people to see it clearly, internally you must be able to see your brand clearly. Now, the question number one on brand and branding is, are you clear as to how you want to be perceived in the market? Do you have a clear image that you want to project to the customers out there? What do we want to be known for? We want to be known for excellent customer service. We want to be known for a place where children feel at home, even when they are at school. Do we want to operate a flat system where everybody takes ownership of everything that is happening? Or we, it is only one person that gives the, the instruction and everybody obeys the instruction. There's no amount of creativity that is allowed within the workflow. Because it is how you, you project yourself that determines how the market will see you. Now, are you clear what kind of image you want to cut in the marketplace? Now, is this image that you have defined? Question number two on this. Is this image that you have defined, is it projecting sustainability? Is it something that we can sustain over a period of time or something that comes as a hit and run? 
we must be clear as to how we want our image to be and we must make effort at sustainability. Clear image in your mind, clear brand in your mind and sustainability of that brand. And the last question on this is, are your practices consistent with your image? The things you do within your business, your school business, are they in alignment with the image that you are projecting? If you are projecting speedy and friendly work environment and you are insulting your workers, you are harassing your workers, you are intimidating your workers, then how do you intend to project friendliness? Because the workers that you maltreat are the ones that will extend the image of the school to the customers out there. If they are not well treated, they cannot treat your customers very right. So your you must look at your work practices. Is it in tandem? Is it in alignment with the kind of image we want to project to our customers? He said, charity begins at home. Now let's leave brand and branding and let's go quickly to pricing. Pricing is how you charge your customer for the services you render to them. And in most organizations, they, they want to have what we call pricing policy. There is a guiding philosophy behind fixing your pricing. But I can tell today, schools just fix price based on what is operating around them. They look at what they call industry average and the key in into the industry average. But I want us to sit back and ask three pertinent questions on our pricing. Do you think your pricing is appropriate? Does it justify the value that you create? Some school will give you a very high price, but even at that, customers are happy to pay it because they can see value. If your price is not tied to the apron of, you, of the value you generate in the marketplace, then your pricing is not appropriate. You must look at the values, the exceptional value that you bring to the marketplace. And if you really want to keep your customers at the price and make the price appropriate, you must evaluate the value proposition alongside with the pricing that you are putting on the table. Now, to make it more exact, can you buy from your own business and truly not feel cheated? Let's put sentiment apart. Can people, can you, with your own money, buy from your own business at the price that you are offering and not feel cheated? Again, we come back to the question of value. Let your value determine your price. Don't just pick the price from the sky. Don't just pick any price because that's what they are charging around. If you want to charge more than your competitors are charging, then do more than your competitors are doing. Bring value to the table. Bring exceptional value to the table, and then you can charge exceptionally. The third question on pricing is, can you increase your price and still increase your customer base? A lot of people say, ah, even at this price, they are not buying. So if we increase the price, chances are that our customer will reduce. Our enrollment will drop. But I can tell you, if your pricing is driven by value that you bring, as you increase the value, you increase the price. Increase the value on one hand, increase the price on the other, and they will be happy to pay. Again, one of the questions that came prominent in the last webinar was, our people, will they be able to pay post-COVID-19? My answer is yes. The question you should be asking yourself, can we bring value to the table that will make our customer to find us irresistible? Can we do things? Can we look at the way you run your business? And can we do something that will make them come, even if we increase our price? Pricing is not the issue, as long as it commensurates with the value that you bring to the table. Your pricing is not the problem. It is the value that you bring. And throw it to your team. Let them ask, what are the value that we can bring that will make our people not to, even if we increase the price? 
And unless you have your people to think in that direction and you come up with values that you can bring to the table, no price is okay. They will always feel cheated because they think that your price is too high, we cannot afford it. People will afford any price as long as they get the value that makes them happy. Well, let's drop the aspect of pricing and let's go to finance. Your finance is how you raise funds to run your business. And most schools from findings, they don't have enough funding. And so the first question is, from your own understanding of the way you do your business, do you think your financing is adequate? Do you have enough money to run things? I'm not saying waste money, but I'm saying, do you have enough money to run your business as you would love to run it? Some of us will say, well, I don't have enough money. I have little money, so I have to live with a little money. No, you can actually raise funds from external uh, forces. You can raise funds from friends. You can raise funds from financial organizations. But the question that you have to have at the back of your mind is, will we be able to generate enough to pay back? Not just pay back the money that we are adding to the business, to the school business, but also to be able to pay back the cost of fund. Because any fund you bring to your business has a cost element to it. And even if you are getting your money from a friend and they are giving, they are loaning you the money free of interest, there is still a cost to it. And that is the cost of friendship, the emotional relationship that is, is connected. Now, if you are going to take funds from outside and there is going to be a cost to it in terms of interest on the money, is the cost of funding bearable to your business? Can your business pay back that cost of fund alongside with the fund itself? A lot of businesses run without clear court financial analysis. You cannot do that post COVID-19. You need to be able to sit down and do the arithmetics. If we take 1 million and add it to our business and we are paying 10% interest, meaning that at the end of the year, over the 1 million that we bring into our school business, we are going to pay 100,000. How do you intend to pay back? What are you going to use the 1 million on to be able to create enough growth to be able to pay back on the 1 million over a period of time and still pay back 100,000? The reason why school businesses don't enjoy financial support is because we are looking for cheap fund. We are looking for money that is free. No. There is nothing free anywhere. Even in free time, there's no free lunch. Always look for how can do the mathematics. How can we pay back with interest on the, on the money? Even if they are, they are telling you don't pay interest, why don't you think as a business person and put a little margin on it? If you take one million from me and I say, okay, I loan it to you free of charge, and then you bring it back and say, okay, ah, though you say I shouldn't pay interest, but uh, because it is, we use the money for business, uh, I'm giving you 5% on top of the 1 million. This is 50,000 for you. Do you think I will reject it? Do you think I will not see that your business is a wise business? Next time, if you ask me to put 10 million into your business, do you think I will hesitate to do that if I have the 10 million? Money is everywhere if we have the right approach to managing it. So again, some questions that came in the last quarter, in the last uh, webinar is, uh, how do we get money to invest on technology? How do we get money to do this? How do we get money to do that? Money is around if you plan your business professionally. And handling the financial aspect of it is very key. Now, the last question on finance is, can you raise more funds if there is need for it? And for some of us, you are thinking now, I can imagine that you are thinking that how can I raise money to grow my business? How do I, how do I raise money to invest in areas that will be needed post COVID-19? If you have challenges in, the, in that area, then you need to talk to a financial analyst, a financial expert, somebody who can give you insight so that you can do the mathematics together with you and you can know how to raise money. Money is, we have plenty of money in our economy. I'm telling you, and I'm not making this to make it look, to, to make it sound very easy, but you need to, there is a way it works to make it truly work. Let's, let's leave finance and let's go to technology, which is the last uh, area that we are focusing on because I really want us to ask ourselves questions today and really make it very engaging. The future of any business is the level of technology it can embrace. And my question to you as school owners is, 
how much technology can your business embrace? I still have three questions that I want us to look at. Question number one, how adaptive are you, are you running your school business to accommodate the growing need of technology? Is your team willing and able to adapt technology into the way your business is running? Somebody said in the last uh, webinar, well, how do you bring technology when more than 40% of your people don't even know how to use a computer? My answer is, if they can't use the computer and you cannot teach them how to use the computer, simply saying, you don't need them. You don't need them. Because if they can't use the technology you want to adapt, then they won't be able to make it work. In fact, as far as they are concerned, they will work to ensure that it does not work because it, it makes them to feel threatened working in an area that they are not comfortable with. And so they will make it not to work. Is our environment safe? We don't have electricity. So how can we run technology without electricity? I know some people are thinking already, maybe your school is in the remote area and then you look at the level of electricity that is available to power the technology that will be required. If that is the case, the question you should be asking yourself is, how can we bring more power supply to our business? What cost will that be bringing on our business? Can we afford it? You know, sometimes some locations are not good for the kind of business that you run in them. And if, you're, if you are running in an environment that does not complement in terms of location with your business, then you're going to have problem. Question number two, can your people run with the technology of tomorrow? We're not talking about the level of technology today. For some of us, there is something we call Internet of Things, where everything will run on autopilot. Internet of Things. I know you have heard about it before, and if you have not heard, please go and Google it up, because that's another approach to technology. Anything you have not heard, ask Google. Anything you don't know about, ask Google. Can your people run with the technology of tomorrow? Things will be faster in times of technology than we see it now. And if what we have on ground is scaring a lot of us, then we are in trouble because what is coming will be more exciting, more energizing than we can ever imagine. There's what we call technology of today that is technology of tomorrow, meaning that you all heard about the adventure of uh, uh, 5G and it's going to alter the face of business business you run 5g is going to be a disruptor of processes and if we are not thinking of tomorrow then we are in trouble and the question again question number two again is can your people run with the technology of tomorrow begin to look at what is happening now and begin to look at what is likely to happen tomorrow we all know about artificial intelligence we are uh, robots will be teaching students in class, and that's, that's, the, that's the technology of tomorrow. We may, not, we may say it is far from us in Nigeria, but it doesn't take long to, to, to flow in on us. The last question on technology is, what is your investment plan for the technology of tomorrow? When you make every year your school business must be making profit, because profit is the bloodline of business. If you are not taking your business profitably, then there is no way you can invest or find enough money to invest in the technology of tomorrow. A lot of schools are running on, well, okay, I'm, how much did we make? After paying school salary, we pay the rent if we are renting our, our facility. And then after that, we don't have anything left. That is dangerous. Your business must have an account that has a profit that we turn in year in, year out. And it is outside of the money that we turn in that we can now set aside as investment on technology. And if we, if we are going to borrow money, then we are borrowing to invest in technology. But any business that does not leave for the owner, for the operator, some margin of profit at the end of every financial year is not a good business. If you have a school business that is running for the past 10 years and you cannot tell what your exact profit for last year was 
then you are not doing a good business. And that kind of practice will not survive post COVID 19. I'm telling you the truth. So, what is your investment platform technology of tomorrow? These are the five areas that I want us to look at and ask questions on. Don't forget, we said we are talking about performance management of your people, how to zero in on them and be able to ask yourself very frank questions, not sentiment, but frank. Then, of course, we look at your brand, the image you are cutting in the marketplace, the pricing that you are charging your people, the finance, the financial structure of your business, and the technology that you are deploying on your business. These are the five areas that we can strategically look at if we want to survive, if we want to adequately reposition our business to be able to do well, not just exist, but to do well post COVID-19. I really don't want to bore us with plenty talk, but I want us to ask questions so that we can turn up more uh, points over this. Again, I thank you. Moderator, over to you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Olayinka, for the expl explanatory and very comprehensive lecture. Uh, it's, it was indeed a mind-blowing lecture, and uh, we are hoping that uh, it's going to help us to in our implementation plans as well as a decision-making process. Uh, once again, to our viewers, we are sure you have some questions already. We have received a few questions, and um, we are hoping to have it answered by Mr. Steve Olayinka. But once again, if you have a message, if you have a question for us, please feel free to send it through uh, the chat box, Zoom chat box. Of course, we will definitely attend to it. Or you can also send us the message directly on our WhatsApp line, 0701-444-3069. Again, 0701-444-3069. 0701-444-3069. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. I have been One of the questions that came uh, is asking, how do we handle performance management? There are various approaches to managing performance, but one simple way to it is having a clear goal of your business. What will this business look like in the next 10 years? What will it look like in the next 20 years? What will it look like, if God permits, in the next 50 years? You see, when you have a clear expectation of where you are going to arrive in the next one year, then the next question is, what do we need to do to make it happen? To simplify matter, the first thing is to set target for, your, for yourself, a target for your school. Like, for example, you want to at attract, uh, maybe currently you're having 100 enrollment in your school. And then your expectation is that this 100 is not profitable because the number is low. Now, we want to at least, for us to be able to get a profitable business, we need like 250 enrollment. We need 250 students enrolled with us. How do we attract 150 extra pupils? Now, that becomes a target. What do we need to do that when people come in to, act, to make inquiry on our schools, they will not be able to go? we will be bring some what we call like a, an attracting force. And it is not by magic. It's not a juju anywhere. It is the kind of service, the kind of environment you create. Now, who will create this environment? The charm of your, of your staff, the smiling faces, the prompt service, the friendly disposition, all of these are the bits and pieces that will make people, when they come to your school and make inquiry, they will say, this is the place that I want my child to go to, to school. Meaning that you will now cascade this target to activities. Our people must, anybody that comes, at, if 10 people come to, to make inquiry in our school, at least seven of them must pick our school as a first choice. The only reason they may not pick our school is if the, thing, if the money is high. And even at that, Money is only high in the mind of the buyer if they think the value is not up to it. So 
put values in place that will be higher than the amount that you are charging them. And so money becomes a new factor. So now your customer, your, you will begin to set targets. Now in, in performance management, you begin to set targets not for teachers alone, but everybody, the, when people walk across your school and they work within your environment, how many good morning, good afternoon do, they, do your, do your uh, client do they receive from them? Everybody, just like the hotel, go to the hotel, go to any hotel, any good hotel, not just any hotel, any good hotel. What they said there is the friendliness, the charming, cleaning, cleanliness in the uh, hotel, the neatness. Of, that's what they sell in hotel. And in schools, it is not just the education. It is not just the A, A, A is apple, B is a B for bag that they sell in school. They sell a lot of human relation. They sell excitement. And so when you are setting target in performance management, you say everybody must have a friendly disposition and you must have metrics for it. We must, our environment must be neat. Who will be responsible for that? Give them targets. If you walk on the path and there is a piece of paper on the floor, everybody that sees a piece of, must pick it. It's not only children that picks. Even teachers will pick, meaning that you have a cleaning culture. And that helps. And so you can reduce that into target that you can set for everybody and then you monitor it. So the, the process in performance management is set target, monitor the target, appraise the target, and reward the target, the achievement of the target. I, I go over it again. Set target, monitor the target, appraise the target, and then reward achievement of the target. So when you have all of these four put together, you have a good performance management system and you can simplify matter. You don't need to invest in huge technology on performance management. Yes, there are technology driven performance management, but we can simplify matter and start small. Set target, monitor the target, appraise the target, and then reward achievement of the target. That's for uh, performance management. Now, there's another question that came. What is the difference between brand and branding? What is the difference between brand and branding. Brand is the image that you create. Branding is the process of creating that image. Having a brand without having a branding agenda will not work because having a brand is having a mental picture of what you want. Then branding is the activity to make that picture in your mind to become a reality. It's as simple, as straightforward as that. Somebody asked a question. Some parents are owing us. How do we collect the money from our customer? Again, I think I said something like this in the last webinar. Your school must have debt recovery policy. I know schools that you can't bring your, in the second week of the new term, if you are owing your children stay at home. But for some of us, we are, if we send them at home, we will, we will not have any student they create value do something that will make them not want to leave if you ask them to go they will beg in and they will go and look for money they have money to do other things they have money to eat they are, yes of course eating is important but they have money for other things and if they think your, your, their children attending your school is very important they will not want to lose that opportunity and so make it impossible for anybody that starts education in your in your school to want to to be able to go away without missing it i know some parental strategy in the first time, they will go to a particular school when they owe there, and they ask them, they will go to another school in a uh, in, uh, second time. They are going somewhere in first time, they go to another school, and most schools won't ask questions. They just want the enrollment. Just come, just how many, just bring them, just come. They, and they bring people into school, not finding out. I think there must be something in school system these days that anybody that is coming in the middle of any particular time or in the middle of a financial year, to any school, you should find out from the school where they left, what, what are they owing, if they are owing, and you accept them, they will owe you to and go to somewhere else. I think school bodies should sit together and sort this out. Debt will always be a, an issue. But if the system is working collectively, then parents will be discouraged from owing. But if they are still owing you, some of the time, when it means money, you will never recover. And that's why it's not good to encourage debt in the first place. 
it's not good. Any business that is running in debt, it will never, you can never grow as a business running in debt. Now, somebody asked a question. He said, there, well, we have some challenges to some of our parents in the North. They don't like technology. I'm, I, don't, I don't agree with you. I don't agree with you. Some of them are using iPhone, I, I, iPhone over there, some of the parents. Some of the students who have Android phones, what level of technology are you looking at? Any technology that cannot engage the phone of your students is not good technology. Any te technology that, does, that cannot engage the, te the phone of, you, of, the, of, your, of the parent of your, of your students. Is not. So work around technology that can fit into their telephone. And there's little technology that cannot fit into, into uh, Android phone and iPhone. So technology shouldn't be an issue. And don't have a mindset that in the north they don't do it. No. Like we can walk around it. We can make it easy for them to embrace. Uh, somebody asked a question, a particular question. He said, how do you organize e-learning programs? E-learning program, that is electronic learning program. This, this, uh, if you can queue in on this, our program, then you have, you have platform to op operate e-learning. Are you planning the e-learning for the parents of, of your students? And some of us should be, just like Rashmed is planning this for you, you also should plan something like this for the parent of your, of, of your, of your words, I think. We should be thinking in that direction. Set a, a, a Zooming a, a program, a, 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 an e-learning agenda for your parent. Get your parent once in a while like in, a, in, in, a, in a platform like this so that you can begin to discuss some of the challenges. If they are owing, is all of these uh, parent teacher association meeting that they, that they normally discuss you can reduce this to a zoom meeting for your parents and what does it cost if you want to know the cost of putting this together after this presentation you can have put a, a, a call to the moderator of this program and it's, the, the cost is very negligible and you will be happy to get the benefit from it then we have another question how advisable is it for a developing school to embark on a loan for capital project post COVID-19? Get proposing for a loan is an easy thing, but let me tell you one thing: you you must have the repayment plan, and your structure must reflect the sincerity of your repayment plan. Getting a loan is not difficult; I can assure you that. But you must your finance must be so such that when you your record must be clear and explanatory enough to say okay at also time this loan that we are taking will be able to will be able to pay back you need a financial expert to sit down and talk with on this and you have to keep your records without records if you look at why some uh, small entrepreneurship don't get loan for their business is because they they think recording things is too is too is, is time wasting i can't be recording everything no you must record for a school, uh, uh, for your kind of school in, uh, in particular, how many students do you have? What is the uh, payment, uh, student average uh, fee per student? Uh, what is the rate of recovery? If uh, in ev every time, in the last three times, uh, um, uh, uh, if you have 100 students in your school, um, what is the percentage of those who paid? What is the percentage of those who don't pay? If your, the percentage of those who don't pay is high, then the bank or the whoever is loaning you the money will think that you are weak at recovering your loan. So if we give you money and then you use it to invest and get bigger students, the more the number, the more the number of those who will not pay, and then our own loan will suffer. And the investor will be looking at that and be asking himself serious questions. So you must have record and have a structure that is, that is business-like in every sense of the word. Then somebody again is asking, how do you organize the learning program? Again, I said, get in touch with the moderator of this program through the uh, line that is made available, and then the details will be provided on how you can set up your own learning program, e-learning program. Then question, if another question is coming up, is that how can a school owner do away with irrelevant, incompetent teachers and such teachers will not feel cheated? Well. If they will feel cheated, that means there is an issue that you need to look at. Why will they feel cheated? If they are, they are not competent, is your school not being cheated? You have a crop of workers 
that know that they are not competent, you know that they are not competent, and you are still paying them salary? Is that not cheating the school system itself? Is that not cheating, cheating your business in the, in the first place? Now, if, they, if you know that they are, not, they are not competent, sit them down and discuss it. This area, this area, this area, and that's why you have to document performance management. This area, this area, this area, you are filled. Give them time. If, if, you, if you have the luxury of time with you, give them time. The, if if they, the first time they didn't do well, appraise it, record it, let them look at it, and then discuss it again, then give them another three months. That's if you have the luxury of time. So businesses can, the, the moment somebody is not good, offload them. But make sure that you have done a thorough job at evaluating that they are really not good. Not that because somebody did not carry the handbag of the proprietor. So that person is not good. No, no, that's, that's sentiment. They are not employed to carry a school bag, a handbag of the proprietor of the school. They are, that's not their, what they are supposed, what are they supposed to do? Are they doing it? If they are not doing it, confront them. The Yorubas have a way of saying it. If there is, if the eye generates uh, some, some stress, which we call Ikpe in Yoruba, you remove that Ikpe and show it to the eye so that the eye knows that what he's doing is not good. So if your student, your teachers are not performing, discuss it engage them in communication this thing you are not doing it appropriately what's the problem let's talk about it and if they are still not doing it after some time that been, then tell them sorry you cannot continue like this we don't want to cheat you we don't want you to cheat us so at this junction please you may have to leave us and i don't think i don't see any reason why they should feel cheated on that note they should not feel cheated except they are really determined to wreck your business and i don't think you will allow that to happen even if they want to do that great 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 uh, thank you, everyone, once again. We so much appreciate. We so much appreciate the attention you have given to us. We appreciate the time taken to join us in this webinar. And uh, just like we said earlier on, we will still send out the materials for this presentation to your respective email addresses. Please drop us your questions, drop us your functional email addresses. And then we also, you can be rest assured that we also communicate you on the next date for uh, the next webinar. And we hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you and have a wonderful weekend. Bye. There is a new disease in town. It is called coronavirus. It is everywhere. Everywhere it goes, it causes sickness. Coronavirus makes people sick. It has no cure. Sam is sick. Very, very sick. I don't want to be sick. To avoid coronavirus, always wash your hands regularly. This is the way I wash my hands, wash my hands, wash my hands. This is the way I wash my hands to keep Corona away. No hand shaking. Good morning, Charlie. No more hand shaking. Thank you. No organ. Please, no organ. Always cough into a handkerchief or a tissue paper. This is the way I used to cough, used to cough, used to cough. This is the way I used to cough, always in my anki. Maintain social distancing. Maintain 